I, I mean, that, you know, there's still a lot, a lot weighing on us here in terms of coronavirus, in terms of lack of job growth, et cetera. Um, what do you think here? Well, good morning. Thanks for having us. Uh, I never thought I would agree with Austin Goolsby on something, but um, I'm tired, just like everybody else is tired. I bet everybody was eating pizza last night. I know I ordered pizza and, and finally I had a was not drinking actually. coffee, but I'll tell you what. <laughs> there you go. Um, listen, uh, I, I think you have to take a deep breath uh, and understand um, that we will know when we know. And we wrote a report uh, about three o'clock in the morning uh, and published a report soon after uh, when it became apparent that we were not going to have a decision for a while. And, and the last line of my report, I talked about how Yogi Berra, the classic Yogi Berra uh, quote that it ain't over till it's over. And, and I think uh, I'm an investment strategist. Uh, I invest people's money. Uh, I forecast the markets for a, a living. That's what I do. And I think everybody has to kind of stay in their lane uh, and do their job. And I think uh, the markets are up because much of the last six months, Julie, as we've talked to clients around the world, uh, we have institutional and private wealth responsibilities at, at BMO. Everybody was convinced uh, that we were going to have a blue wave. And we've, there's been a lot of talk in the last couple of days uh, of the relief rally. That there was not a blue wave. You know, I think there was too much emphasis on polls. We've been very clear for several months that politics have nothing to do with the absolute performance of the stock market. It's the, tra it's the trajectory of, of fundamentals in the economy. Uh, if you look back at the last 10 years and 10 years ago, uh, that the recovery that we saw following the Great Recession uh, was very slow. This one's going to be very slow. I know that the Fed and the stimulus packages have been very aggressive. Uh, but with this kind of overhang in debt, in the low interest rate environment, uh, it's going to take a while for the economy to get back to where it was. Now, that being said, Julie, why the stock market is up is clearly fundamental. If you have zero interest rates and risk premiums, zero interest rates and zero and risk premiums at all time highs, markets are going higher, period. In the believability quotient of this bull market, which we believe has been in place uh, for the last 11 years, we think it has 10 more years to go. And especially given the fact that the majority of clients still don't own stocks, you still have massive amounts of asset allocation focused on fixed income, and you have this notion of the fear factor and the climbing the wall of worry. We just think this thing goes higher, and it's going to be driven by the best companies in the world, which are, by the way, some of these tech stocks and communication stocks, which are the mobile society stocks and the stay-at-home stocks, because they have the best products, they have the best earnings, they have the best balance sheets, and the best cash flow. To us, it's common sense. All this other rhetoric in terms of, of binary discussions with respect to the left and the right, uh, we're all just talking our book in terms of politics. Instead of talking your book, you should just focus on, on what's right in the economy and fundamentals. And we think it's the U.S. stock market. Brian, uh, the tech rally uh, has continued since you and I exchanged uh, an email. Tech is out of the gate. Uh, uh, we exchanged that email yesterday. Tech is out of the gate uh, hot again today. Do you think the move is a little bit overdone? I get that these companies have, have great fundamentals, but they're still likely to come under attack, even, even in a divided government, and that attack could continue next year. Great question, Brian, and great comment. And I'm glad that we were emailing back and forth because you know the believability of tech stocks on a short-term basis of, you know, especially given the bad October performance, was low. I mean, let's face it, on both sides, as you said. Uh, they're going to go after the tech stocks. But again, again, some common sense. What can the Google machine and the Apple machine and the Facebook machine do? They can get out their checkbook and, and, and write a check and say, oh, find me. And, and that's probably going to be the most likely outcome, common sense. We are emotional in the marketplace. We're going we're gonna to go right to the, the, the goal line and expect we're going to break up these companies. The likelihood of breaking up these companies, again, common sense is very low. I think more so, we're going to see more emerging technologies and more new leadership in technology, whether or not it's PayPal or Zoom or NVIDIA or Visa. These companies, technology are leading for a reason. It's because of where we are in the secular change in terms of how we're growing as an economy. And we think that continues, whether or not Apple's still going to be the largest company in the world in 10 years. I think that remains to be seen. But in the meantime, it's still one of the best companies in the world and, comp and, and investors should maintain their positions.
And I guess, Brian, in thinking about that longer term bullish outlook for the U.S. stock market, what do you see happening with valuations in an environment where we anticipate rates are going to be low, stay low? Um, what do you think the, the market multiple settles at? Because the last decade, all we heard is valuations are too high. Certainly, we've seen a lot of multiple expansion this year in anticipation of better earnings. But what kind of number sounds reasonable, I guess, uh, in your mind, thinking out for the next decade? Great point, Miles, and I'll remind everyone that the last decade's uh, strategy and a lot of investment with respect to how we're building portfolios was dominated by macro and quantitative measures, which have actually been absolutely positively wrong. The majority of those things have been uh, underperforming. So again, I don't think doing a market comment with respect to an earnings and a multiple number uh, is as simplistic. You have to run cash flow and dividend discount models and macro models and PE models, which we have done for 30 years in the market. So. It, there is no magic multiple number. It's not that I'm not met, uh, asking your, uh, answering your question. I think the bigger issue, quite frankly, is going to be when everybody decides that the Fed is never going to raise interest rates again, and we have some sort of a semblance of Fed complacency, and everybody believes this is going to be pushed out even more than three years, when we start as a society and as an investment society believing that and consensus is we're, we're never going to have an interest rate change again, that's when I will worry. I don't think we're anywhere near that. Let's see as the market uh, and the companies begin to broaden out in terms of earnings. That's when I think we can start making more of a more of a value call. It's way too early yet. Uh, and, and I think we're still going to be uh, concentrated with respect to performance for those companies that are delivering earnings, one of which you talked about earlier, Costco. I mean, one of the, I, mean I don't know about the hot dogs, but it's one of the top 25 companies in the world. So I, you have to kind of think like that as a stock picker. Going back to the last 10 years, we were so macro dominated, so formulaically dominated. This is about stock picking. It's about companies. It's about management. It's about products. It's about services. We as an investment society have completely forgotten about all of that. So I think that's going to dominate investment themes for the next 10 years.